So we've gotten some practice in on finding the antiderivatives of polynomials. Um, for the most part, it was just the opposite of the power rule, except when we had an exponent of x to the negative one. And in that case, we needed to remember to talk about the natural logarithm instead. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to start thinking about trig functions and what the antiderivative of trig functions are. OK, so here on page 488, it says we learned that the derivative of sine of x with respect to x is equal to cosine x and the derivative with respect to x of cosine x is equal negative sine of x. So similarly, we want to write the antiderivatives of sine and cosine. So what do you think? <clears throat> so the antiderivative of cosine of x dx, what function has cosine as its derivative? Well, right here, we see that it's sine. So that's sine of x. All right. And over here, we want to figure out, ah, did you catch my little trick there? We need to add that constant term because when we're talking about antiderivatives, it's a family of functions. We don't know what that constant could be. <clears throat> what about the antiderivative of sine of x dx? Well, it's not cosine of x, because remember, the derivative of cosine would be negative sine. So the derivative, in order to get that negative to go away, we need to take negative cosine of x. So let's think about that. The derivative of negative cosine of x would be negative negative sine. Those two negatives cancel out, and that gives us the positive sine of x. Once again, if you have trouble with the antiderivatives, just kind of take a guess and then try taking the derivative of your guess and double check to make sure that it's right. <clears throat> All right, so let's go through a couple of these examples here. <clears throat> so the antiderivative of two sine x plus cosine x, we're just going to go through and do the same tricks we were doing on the last page. Uh, we're just going to find the antiderivative of each term in this. So the antiderivative of two sine of x is going to have to be negative two times cosine of x. And then the derivative of cosine of x, I'm sorry, the antiderivative of cosine of x is sine of x plus sine of x. And then we're going to add in this constant term of c as always. OK, so it's just the same trick as what we have before. We just have these extra little toolkits of things that we know the antiderivative of. And maybe we've got a case like this where we're taking the indefinite integral of 4x minus 3 times cosine of x dx. Give that a shot in pencil or on a piece of scrap paper. OK, so once again, we're just going to take the antiderivative of each term. So the antiderivative of 4x, well, we add 1 to the exponent, so it'll be x squared. And then 4 divided by 2 is equal to 2. Let's double check. Der the derivative of 2x squared, 2 times 2 is 4 times x. So that's exactly what I want to have. And then the antiderivative of cosine of x is equal to sine x. So we're going to write this as negative 3 times sine of x plus a constant term. All right. I'm going to leave these other two blank. You can give them a shot if you want to. Um, I will uh, give you um, the answers to them in a later video. So you can double check to see if you're right. And in the next video, we're going to go on and solve these, which are some kind of interesting. These are other forms of differential equations, except now we know the second derivative of a function. And we want to find out what the function is based on that. So we'll find out how to solve that in the next video. <clears throat>